Greetings, everybody. Michael here. Wherever, whenever, and however you may be, I hope you are as peaceful as can be. So I'm going to talk about the process and what we can do to make this journey smoother. One of the things that I've been able to recognize is that first and foremost, we can not yet anyway fully understand really much of anything. So we start with simple appreciation for everything. If we can appreciate the basics of life, then that is always a good place to start. So, for example, do you have food to eat today? Most likely you do. If you don't, then don't worry about it because you can go 30 days without food. Do you have clean water to drink? I do and I'm very grateful for that. A lot of people don't. You can go five days without drinking water. Are you free from any sort of injury that would include bleeding? If you are, you should be grateful. You can survive 10 to 12 minutes, I believe, if you bleed out. So I know that's an extreme scenario, but if you're free from injury and you're not bleeding out, you should be grateful. You have plenty of time to simply be. I took a deep breath because with every single breath, you have approximately three minutes of life, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's long enough to feel as peaceful as you're intended to feel. Our natural state of being is peacefulness. So, Start with appreciation of those basic necessities of life. We need food to eat. We need to be free of overexposure to the elements. So I forgot to ask that question. Um, I do appreciate that I have a roof over my head. So a lot of people don't have that luxury and it is a luxury. So if you can eat, hydrate, stay protected from the elements, maintain your circulatory system, and that includes your breathing, you're being given the gift of life. So the expectation is that that body that you have is going to last forever. Well, in that formation, 
course, it does not. But we do realize that we never die. We simply transfer our energy from this plane of existence to the spiritual realm. And we're learning more and more about this process. So that word process is, is what I'd like to discuss. If we can learn to enjoy the process and this journey of life is a process because we are energy transducers. We receive energy in various forms and we give it back. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by using our different energy centers. We have seven chakras in our body and we communicate most effectively with our heart chakra. Now we can do this by speaking using our throat chakra. We can formulate ideas in our brow chakra and we can also share energy via our solar plexus chakra by, by being joyous and, and passionate about life and just simply being. So we also have our sacral chakra that is our sexual reproductive organs. And of course, we do reproduce. We have offspring. And what we're doing with that, and of course, that experience hopefully is joyful. When we have children, what we're doing is we're perpetuating life, which is meant to simply continue the conversation with our higher power. So this whole thing, this whole process has been a communique. The Holy Communion is the conversation that we've has, had and are having continue. So all of this is Part of the process. All of what we're doing is meant to be part of this experience. So when we can learn to be present and ask ourselves how do we feel, we can become more peaceful. When we let fear invade our thought process, what we're doing is we're remaining at a level of awareness and disallowing the information to come in. So that barrier is preventing more of the information that's going to allow us to become more aware. So it is a give and take process. So if we recognize the friction before it turns into pain and anguish and all of these other than peaceful types of feelings, what we can do next is very simple. Become present and ask the question. So we are genuinely curious beings, so we do want to know things. When we get confused, that should become evident that we are simply not meant to fully understand that exact process right then and there. So all of our experiences that are the lessons are stored away in our memories and can be recalled later. So 
we are processing all of this data. And the way that we do that is very often through our subconscious part of our minds and we more often than not do that in the dream state when we're sleeping. So there's so many different ways of, of viewing all of this and there's different ways to process the information. Some of us are very logical and will dissect the data in a very analytical way and order it, classify it, and, and that's perfectly fine. Some of us are more intuitive and we're going to trust our intuition and, and, and feel our way through. Either way, regardless of what type of personality you have, the feeling of peace can be used as the verification that you've accepted certain levels of truth about yourself. So if you look back on your life, everything that you remember that you were worried about, you can acknowledge that that thought form of worrying, doubt, and fear was really unnecessary. It didn't do anything. It certainly didn't make the problem disappear. If anything, when you attach yourself to these fearful thought forms, you're holding in your mind the possibility of what you think you don't want to happen happen. The power of manifestation is the law of attraction. And whatever you put out to the universe, you're going to get back in some form or another. And remember, all of these experiences are just meant as lessons. They're meant to teach you various things, how to be more compassionate, how to be less judgmental how to be kind, how to be more loving, and sometimes just how to simply be. So if you feel confused, you're overthinking. If you feel frustrated or angry at somebody or something, you're actually angry at yourself for not accepting who and what that person is or what that thing is supposed to do. You, you're going to be making assumptions or you have expectations and all of these things are part of the process too. So learn to laugh at yourself as you become more aware and you have those aha moments. Just know that all of those experiences all of those experiences were meant for you. All of them. Every single one of them. Every thought, every, every word you uttered, everything that you've ever seen, smelled, tasted, or touched was meant for you or it wouldn't have happened. So God's will is for you to become more aware. It's not to punish you you are not created to suffer. God is merciful. God is graceful. But he also gave us free will so that we can experience this process with God. That process of discovering means that you realize that the information that you're getting is useful. If you determine that it's not and you discard it, when it is meant for you, what will happen is you'll go on with your life and then you'll get another experience that's going to teach you the same thing. So 
So having faith is enjoying the process, accepting that there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is peaceful feelings waiting for you. And if you start with appreciation, you'll get there. All right, people, I love you. You're awesome. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me, everardmusic at gmail.com. That's E-V-R-A-R-D-M-U-S-I-C at gmail.com. Or you can check out some really cool images at my Instagram page. That's at Everard Music. I'm developing a website that will be up soon. In the meantime, I do have my YouTube channel, which is Everard Music. All right, guys. Peace.